Gentlemen, welcome back to the Sea Lord Naval Academy. Today we are going over cruisers, ships that are less tanky than battleships, but not as frail as destroyers, with much larger guns than destroyers, but not as large as battleships. Such a strange class of ships indeed. However strange they are, they are amongst the most important classes in game. Today we are going to be placing them on the tier list from F to S. Just like with battleships, there will be some grouping, as if I didn't do that, this video would be about the length of your average Christopher Nolan film. Once again, this is primarily about having fun, a concept that is exceedingly more and more erased from the player base's mind. With that out of the way, let us begin. We begin at the bottom with F tier. Cruisers at this tier are not worth the time or money to acquire them and are entirely skippable, starting out with the Emerald. Oh. The Dutch cruisers are amongst the most miserable ships in the game. Incredibly easy to delete and equipped with some horrendously frustrating guns, they are a misery to get through. F tier. Achieve that, we decided to opt for the Dutch process Coco. The Seattle has to be simply one of the most miserable tier 9 cruisers with some of the worst armor combined with some absolutely terrible gun angles and just mediocre guns overall. You have an absolute slug of a ship here, F tier. Mother effing Seattle at tier nine. Holy shit, this thing's terrible. Oh, you want armor? 25 everywhere that isn't the belt. Oh, I hope I have a good belt. Super ships are designed to be broken and therefore belong in F tier. And when everyone's super, <laughs> Seshire, Hampshire, Tiger 59, my sore makes me sore, F tier. Greetings everyone, it's Gryphy here. I'm looking today at the new premium release of Vessel the My Sore. I will never forgive Wargaming for what they've done to Siegfried. They took a fun brawling tier 9 cruiser with two different playstyle options, imagine that, different playstyle options, then forced her into a long range sniping style with Commander Rework. Keep in mind that this is a ship that requires you to regrind lines or fork over $300 in order to get, and was changed overnight with no refunds or exchanges. F tier, out of principle. A fella named Siegfried. Gentlemen, we are now moving into D tier. The cruisers here are, dare I say, playable. Sevastopol, take a completely mid large cruiser hull, shave 10,000 HP off of it, Give it the Siegfried guns, and then give it the most gimmicky consumable set known to the human race, including a super heal that heals so slowly that it doesn't matter. You will still get melted down if you try to use it in the middle of battle. A speed boost that doesn't last long enough for you to go anywhere. All that on a completely mediocre hull. D tier. We're calling Sevastopol traffic control. We're carrying three passengers on a way. Tone is a hybrid Otago, which Otago is a much better ship, that gives up a turret for absolutely terrible planes. These planes are literally tier 6 planes at tier 8, but they have a longer reload time than the Issei, which is a tier 6 ship, and they even get one less plane than the tier 6 ship at tier 8. How does this make sense? D tier. I don't speak Japanese. Dido is a British Atlanta, whose Chinese cousin gets a proper smokescreen, but she doesn't. Yet, she doesn't have enough range to do much, but also doesn't get a heal so that it can play how you need to play it in order for it to do well overall. So simply, you try to play the ship as you need to in order to get the performance out of the Dido, and you just blow up. D tier. Can you make it work? Made by the English. Let's not get our hopes up. There is no other cruiser line that has been more power crept or left in the dust, more so than the Japanese heavy cruisers. These guys used to be the long range HE spammers of their time. Try taking one out today and see how long range they are. The light cruiser line outranges them. Add to that their weird geometry that leads to them eating citadels at the most convoluted angles. And D tier. <laughs> the Belfast 43 is an attempt to cash in on reintroducing the Belfast into the game. One of the most busted ships in the game. Wargaming wound up bonking it too hard with the nerf bat and we just got a pale copy of the Belfast. D tier. Hadn't we better get the women and children into the boat, sir? The Donningham is a Nelson that went on a diet but forgot her super heal. D tier. Robin Longstride, also known as Robin of the Hood, are declared outlaws of the realm. Canaries is a chunky heavy cruiser that doesn't have a heal, HE, or the torpedoes that she should have. 
Wargaming tried to gimmick too much with their alternative firing mode, but they wound up removing it anyway. But then they forgot to put back what they removed in order to give her that alternative firing mode. D tier. Omaha. Murmansk. Tulsa is a diet Des Moines, which means it's terrible. D tier. What surprise for Exeter having 230mm guns at tier 5? A massive citadel. D tier. Let me just get a couple of biscuits. Alright lads, we are moving up to C tier. The cruisers included in this tier are decent, I might even hazard to say, well made. Starting out with the Lazo, probably the closest thing Wargaming has ever gotten to reintroducing the Kutuzov. They nerfed the range, but gave her a spotter plane with a 10 second cooldown time and removed her smoke. Still a pretty solid fire starter. C tier. Console, not crazy, Ivan. The Kronstadt is one of the original large cruisers in this game, which means she's been overshadowed by newer ships. Her takiness comes from her HP, her armor is actually quite mediocre as I mentioned with the Sevastopol, since the Commander rework removed the ability for these cruisers to build into survivability skills, it absolutely murdered Kronstadt's survivability. She still has some nice guns though, and radar, so C tier. Russians don't take a dump, son, without a plan. Grashby is a historical ship that has a rough go in the game. Imagine my surprise. Her 283mm guns do absolutely wreck at tier 6 when they connect. But unfortunately, the game hasn't evolved in a direction that has led to engagement ranges closing in. But in Tier 6, it still happens time to time. And when ranked or brawls are at Tier 6, Crash Speed still does well. Plus, she has just about every German gimmick bolted onto her deck, so C tier. I've ordered this concentration here off the River Plate because of news that I've received of the latest movements of the German surface radar that's at large in the South Atlantic. Flint is Atlanta's sister that has short range due to her having a smoke screen. At least according to Wargaming, that means she's still able to perform well. They must have forgotten all about those radar ships they've added in. C tier. The images of the water are shocking enough. Would you trade that? Arian is a Chinese Kutuzov that's more of a side grade when you trade main battery guns for deep water torpedoes, leading to a slightly different playstyle where you attempt to use your deep waters in a cutting position. C tier. <laughs> the American light cruisers are like a Swiss army knife. Lots of utility in the package, radar, hydro, DFAA, etc. What's the cost of that utility? The curse of the floaty American shells and cruisers made out of explodium. C tier. An hours long standoff in Worcester. WB Kirov. It's. I. C tier. Kirov reporting. The Italian cruiser grind is an incredibly miserable experience until you get around tier 8. Once again, showing that SAP was a mistake and therefore is a balancing nightmare. Due to the performance of SAP, many of these cruisers have poor reload times with a mediocre amount of guns, and of course, they tend to explode quite easily. However, the higher tier ships, well, mainly the Venezia, is quite good. So we balance this out at C tier. The Pan American Cruisers. Imagine the American light cruisers, but AP only, with a gimmick mini game that you have to play in order to access your heal. C tier. Martin! The Rochester is essentially a Baltimore that answers the question, what would it be like if we gave the Baltimore smoke and a longer reload? It's mediocre. That's the answer. Of the nations in Midtown Plaza, Rochester, New York. Anchorage, essentially a Baltimore with another turret on that answers the question, what would it be like if we gave the Baltimore another turret, smoke, torpedoes, and a five second longer reload time? It's still mediocre. C tier. Anchorage will be liberated. Perth. Let it go, dog. C tier. The German cruisers are for the most part floating citadels until you get to the tier 10. Until then, the line is full of cruisers that get citadeled from just about every conceivable angle due to their weird geometry, and are cursed to have low HE alpha, but do have improved HE pins and AP that hits harder than most of the cruisers of the same tier. So C tier. Congress is about as useful as a namesake. It's a poor man's Alaska missing a couple of guns and a heal. C tier. The chair declares the second session of the 117th Congress adjourned. All right, fellas, it's time for us to get into the good stuff. Welcome to B tier. The Atlanta is a little machine gun that could. B tier. <laughs> Boise is an American light cruiser that gets 15 152 millimeter guns. While she does have a shorter than normal range, she does get a super heal that helps her stay in the fight and makes a pretty forgiving ship for newer players. B tier. 
9 de julio, crucero ligero argentino que tiene 15 cañones de 152 milímetros, mientras que tiene un alcance más corto de lo normal, obtiene una super curación que ayuda su permanencia en la lucha y hace un barco bastante indulgente para los jugadores nuevos. Peter. Yeah, but it's, it's actually meaningless. If you look at Maya, take an Otago, show it down at tier 7, call it a day. Peter. Ochkov, take a Smolensk, give it 852mm guns, remove the smoke, slap radar on it, drop it down to tier 8, now you have an Ochkov. Peter. Carnot. Ah, yes, the forgotten French large cruiser. I think the Carnot gets forgotten because it doesn't really have any big gimmick and was released after we had received quite a few of these things back to back to back. Overall, it just does what the French line does, but bigger. Although not quite the throttle juker that the French cruisers are, and she stands up out of the water like she's on stilts, and she is still a solid large cruiser, in my opinion. B tier. The Pan-Asian light cruisers were a bit of a surprise. At first, they looked like a line of Atlantas with deepwater torpedoes. While they are quite squishy, the deepwater torpedoes, in use with the torpedo reload booster these cruisers get, do give you a surprising punch from these light cruisers. Combine that with rapid-firing guns and smoke screen these cru that these cruisers get, you have a fearsome package in these cruisers. B tier. Grisia. The D7 Provincian is a Dutch light cruiser that's a mix of heavy and light. She has the armor of a heavy cruiser and a heel, but 152mm guns, and the Dutch airstrike armament, which leads to an interesting playstyle, and a light cruiser that can actually take a hit or two. And she was one of the better dockyard ships, in my opinion. So, B tier. Aragon, not no endless. The Japanese light cruisers are a very interesting take on the light cruiser formula. The IJN light cruisers have a large number of smaller caliber guns, but these guns have reload times that are similar to heavy cruisers. They also have a long range torpedo set with decent reload times. They are squishier than your average cruiser, but do have a very nice rudder shift to them, which leads to a very long range heavy cruiser playstyle with torpedoes, yet you can't get hit because you will simply cease to exist. An interesting take on the light cruiser formula, indeed. B tier. Almirante Grau is a D7 sans the airstrikes, but it has an interesting gimmick, where as long as you are undetected, her alternative fire mode will continue to charge up, and once that is charged up, you get a 66% reload booster for 30 seconds. Now, she doesn't have a heal, but she still does have that decent armor. So, B tier. And I shall die as one of them. Wanky is a Perth with better AA and the option to take torpedo reload booster. B tier. Toulon. Bayard. This boat's annoying. However, B tier. <laughs> Munchen's essentially a mine's a tier lower, solid Daka ship. B tier. Graf Zeppelin is one of the best cruisers in the game. She has amazing firepower with her 150mm guns. She also has three different spotting planes. There is a weird glitch where the camera will follow the planes rather than the ship. Where Gimme has them dragging their feet on getting this glitch fixed, I do not know why. B tier. I love this thing. I could kiss it. I probably will. I already did. Fellas, this is it. This is where the good stuff is. Let's get going. Stalingrad was literally the poster child of Russian bias for years. She has since been power crept via newer ships and global changes and reworks, but will still absolutely dumpster you on her worst day. A tier. I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism, SPACE! The American Heavy Cruisers are the oldest cruiser line in-game, but still one of the best. Nothing makes a player regret showing broadside more than an American Heavy Cruiser with their Super Heavy AP loaded. A tier. San Diego. Austin. While the grind to get the Hindenburg might be a painful one, the Hindenburg has been one of those cruisers that has constantly held up a middle finger to the meta and gone on about her day. Her excellent AP and RPM have managed to keep her performing well throughout the years. Add to that her long range and duration German Hydro and her surprisingly decent AA, she brings a good bit of utility to the table. A tier. The French cruisers are a surprisingly consistent line up and down the tech tree. 
They're equipped with a French cruiser armor scheme. That means they take your 20 inch shells and simply deposit them into the void that is the French armor scheme. Add to that the large guns for their tier with a reload booster, engine boost, and good maneuverability. You've got some nice baguettes here. A tier. Both the light and heavy Soviet cruiser lines belong here. Soviet bias AP, incredibly tanky cruisers on both lines, radar, comfortable ballistics. Where did you expect them to be? A tier. Aguirre is a tanky German large cruiser with hydro, 305mm guns, with German AP, and torpedoes. A rare, good German premium. A tier. Prince Oregon is a hipper that doesn't get wrecked by battleships because she has a heal at the cost of reload speed. A rare, good German premium. A tier. Mainz is a hipper with 155mm guns, gets German AP with a good reload time, torpedoes, and hydro. A rare, good German premium. A tier. Elbing is a really small German light cruiser with 150mm guns that hit harder than some nations heavy cruiser guns hit. Great cruiser. A tier. Both the British light and heavy cruisers get a spot here. While the light cruisers are tricky to master with their AP only guns and inability to stop in a reasonable amount of time, they are exceptionally rewarding when mastered however. The heavy cruisers are more forgiving to play and a fun cockroach line due to their super heals. They also get their HE shells, unlike the light cruisers. A tier for both of them. Do you actually believe the Queen died of natural causes? Brisbane. Hector. Hector! A tier. Hector! Salem is when you need a Des Moines to eat 18 inch shells to the face and simply not care thanks to her super hill. A tier. Someday, when you're older and wiser, you'll be able to look back on all this and get revenge. Moskva is the OG tier 10 Russian heavy cruiser, still one of the best, gets all the Soviet goodies, radar, Soviet AP, comfortable ballistics, good armor, and a nice reload time, and of course, a proper amount of HP. A tier. Smolnik still lives rent free in the heads of most battleship players, even though she's been nerfed and removed from the game. A tier. Puerto Rico is a small Montana that's responsible for giving us our new, very excellent dockyard events. A tier. Visit Puerto Rico, America's favorite colony. I mean, terror. Azuma prints credits just as well as she gets citadeled. A tier. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Well, boys, we have made it. Welcome to the cream of the crop, S tier. Let's get into it. The Indianapolis recently has been buffed to be an absolute tank at its tier, and she has radar at tier 7. S tier. Japanese submarine slammed two torpedoes into our side chief. Yoshino is an Azuma that doesn't explode as much, has long range torpedoes, better AA, and more accurate guns. S tier. Alaska has 305mm guns with American AP, radar, hydro, and good AA. If she doesn't citadel you to death, she'll burn you down. All in a tanky package. S tier. You can actually see Russia from land here in Alaska. Napoli is an incredibly tanky Italian cruiser with sap secondaries and an exhaust smoke. The sap secondaries will melt cruisers and destroyers that get close to you. She's also equipped with some amazingly hard hitting 254mm guns and torpedoes. Tanky as a battleship, nimble as a cruiser. S tier. The Otago is one of the oldest premiums in this game. She's equipped with 10 203mm guns with Japanese HE, which means she has great HE alpha and fire chance on her shells. She's also equipped with torpedoes with better, much better angles than the Japanese heavy cruiser tech line. She's also quite stealthy, able to get her detection range down under 10 kilometers with the proper build. A stealthy heavy cruiser that packs quite a bit of a punch with her HE shells and also her AP when things do mess up and show her broadside. A ship that's very comfortable to maneuver with a very quick rudder shift time of under 3 seconds, again if you want to build into that. All around a fantastic premium that stood the test of time and is in my opinion one of the best premium cruisers in this game. S tier. Well gentlemen, there you have it. My ultimate cruiser tier list. If you enjoyed, Paid your tuition by sharing with your friends, dropping a like, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.